All right, so let's look at this problem. <clears throat> We've got a box that is sliding on this horizontal surface, uh, sliding across here. This coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. Uh, it's a uniform 50 kilogram crate. Determine the acceleration of 600 newton forces applied uh, to the crate as shown. So let's draw the free body diagram. Um, let me draw this out here. Let me draw its free body diagram. Uh, before I forget, uh, let me draw the weight. Sometimes I forget that. 50 uh, times 9.81. I've got this force right here, 600 newtons, right there. Um, I've got the force of friction. Uh, I think it may, we can imagine this is sliding across the floor. Force of friction opposes the motion. It is mu k times n. Uh, what is n? Let's talk about n. Now, don't do this. Don't, don't draw this right here. I used to draw this right here. Uh, but i got to be a lot more careful about drawing the forces where they are really acting. So I'm, my, I might want to draw it down here, but it's not really acting at the middle. What is, what is really happening is it's kind of acting on the whole object. It's like a distributed load. It's like a distributed load. Now, could I replace that distributed load with one force at the middle? I could if the distributed load was uniform. If this was a uniform distributed load, if this N, normal force, was really distributed right here and uniform, then yeah, I could replace it with one, one um, force right at the middle, right down here at the middle right here. But do you think it is uniform? Imagine that your finger was underneath here, under the box right here. If, if you've got a force that's almost kind of pushing it towards the top, the top part of this box, uh, would you rather put your finger under that side or under that corner? Think about that. If, if someone's pushing the top of this box, I think it would hurt worse over here. Can you imagine that this distributed load is really more I don't know, kind of like this. It is larger over here than it is over here. It's a distributed uniform load, but it's a very uh, interesting, complicated, um, non-uniform distributed load. What can we do? Well, uh, I don't know. Let, let's just put it maybe towards the right half of it. And let's say we don't know this distance d that it is away from the middle. Okay, so I've got to be very careful in putting forces where they really are. This one, I'm going to put it somewhere in, but I'm going to say I don't know. That's a, that d, that distance d is unknown, and I need to solve for it just to make sure I can tell, okay, that's where that n is. Even though it was a distributed load, that's where I could place the um, I could replace that distributed load with a force right there. Okay, all right. So for normal forces now, let's draw them, but let's add that distance d and let's solve for that distance d to really kind of you know, remind or, or to clarify. Oh, okay, it, it was right there. You know, I don't know, 50 centimeters to the right of the center. It wasn't right at the center. It was a little bit to the right of the center. To the right of the center. Okay. All right. But anyway, here, here's our, uh, we, we've, we've drawn all the forces. Let me just, this is mu k times n, force of friction, normal force, weight. Okay. Now, what are we going to do? We're still going to sum our forces in the x. Uh, define your x. I like to define my Axes according to the acceleration. Looks like this is just accelerating to the right. Some of the forces in the x direction. 600 minus mu k times n equals m equals m a in the x. Does it have some acceleration in the x? Yeah, yeah, I think it is sliding in the x, so it might have some acceleration. Let me sum the forces in y. Uh, negative 59.81. Positive n equals, now don't write uh, equals 0 too soon, but it equals ma. What is this acceleration in the y direction? This is of point g. Uh, 
if, if I'm assuming it's not tipping, then this is zero. If not tipping over. All right, so my N would be 490.5. I'll plug that back in up there. My acceleration would be 10 meters per second squared. Uh, but I made an assumption there. I need to state whether that's true or not, whether whether I can really assume that or not. Uh, and I haven't sum, let, sum my moments. Let, let me sum my moments. Let me sum the moments about G. All right, let me sum my moments about G. Summing the moments about G, the weight goes straight through G. It is, we can always put the weight straight down from the center of gravity, even though it really is distributed over the whole box, um, we can replace it at the center of gravity. Uh, so the weight goes straight through point G, but now N, which was 490.5, is not straight through G, it is a distance D away creating a, do we want to say positive is counterclockwise, so creating a positive moment. Uh, that's 600 newtons. Where's that? That's 0.8 above, but G is at very, very middle, 0.5. So this distance would be 0.3. Uh, positive or negative, that would create a negative rotation about G. And then force of friction. 0.2 times 490.5. How far away from G is that? That is 0.5 away from G, uh, creating a negative moment. All right, and sum of the moments equals I G alpha. I, now, I don't know what I G is, but my alpha is zero um, if it is not tipping, right? If this is just in translation, there's no rotation. My alpha is zero. Okay, I do, I do this equation, and I get a distance d of 0.467 meters. And I, I need to ask myself, is this possible? Is this possible? Can my n get a distance 0.465? Well, let's look at this dimension here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it could really get all the way over here to 0.5 away so as long as this is le as long as this is possible as long as it's still on the 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 box then yes this is possible so my assumption was correct it is not tipping A and so yes here's my final answer a is 10 meters per second squared what if I had gotten that this D uh, needed to be 0.7 something? What if I had gotten that that, it, that normal force is 0.764 meters away from the, the center? Then what would that mean? That means that in order for this to equal zero, in order for this to equal zero, my normal force would have to be 0.764. If I got something that was impossible, if I got something that was impossible, what, it, what does that mean? That means it was tipping, not slipping, or tipping and slipping, or tipping before slipping. Okay, so from now on, these normal forces, draw them, but solve for their location, and make sure their location is possible. Make sure their location is possible. Make sure their location is still on the box, still on the block. Okay? All right, now, let me real quickly. We, we had one of, I sum the moments about G. I sum the moments about G. <laughs> Sometimes it might be helpful. Not in this case. But if I had summed my moments about A, point A, I could sum my moments about A, you know, why might I do that? Well, hey, I don't know, maybe the force of friction goes straight through it, so that, 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 that wouldn't show up in my equation, but everything else would show up in my equation. If I sum the moments about A, it would be equal to IG alpha 
plus, but really minus M A D, and this distance D would be 0.5. Uh, so if if you sum most about G, it should equal to I G alpha. If you sum most about a different point, it's I G alpha plus M A D, or in this case minus M A D, because the M A vector would be right here, creating a clockwise creating a clockwise, you can't see I'm doing air quotes, moment, not a real moment, but a clockwise moment about A um, right here. So don't, don't do that if you don't have to, but if you had to sum your moments about a different point, it'd be I alpha plus MAD.